Appreciate your jumping into the deep end of the stream here on Birds 365 with Mac and Mac, Don McMahon, and Jody McDonald. We are joined by Matt Verdram, fan-sided national writer and host of Stacking the Box podcast. MV, it's been about a month since you and I talked. How are things going? Good, good. Certainly the season's in full swing. How are you guys? Uh, doing well, Matt. I'm going to give you the opportunity. I want to talk about the biggest abject disaster in the NFL. I mean, if you count off the field, you probably have to go the Washington commanders. If you, if you just go football wise, you might say the Indianapolis Colts. So yeah. where would you start? And by the way, here in Philadelphia, those are the next two Eagles opponents. If you think the stars are not aligning for the Eagles, which of those two situations has you scratching your head more? That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, I, I guess just by default, it has to be Washington because they've left you scratching your head for 25 yeah, years at this point. That's true. The longevity uh, is unparalleled. It's <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Like I wrote I, my stack in the box column goes up every Monday over at Fansided, and I I wrote I led with Schneider and and Washington, and I talked to people around the league about that and. Uh, there's a a hope that yeah, if he sells, that that would that would be just fine by a lot of people. I mean, first of all, it would make every franchise more lucrative uh, for the next owner that sells because they will get the highest sale price of any North American sports team in history. Secondly, it gets rid of a really long-standing headache for the NFL. As far as on the field, though, uh, yeah, the the Colts right now are about as bad as it gets. You have a team that has no quarterback, uh, no real head coach, nobody who can call a play. Uh, I reached out to a lot of people <laughs> around the league when that all went down. I had one source say to me it's the, it's the most bizarre hire they had seen in 30-plus years of being involved in the NFL. Uh, another who thought that the only reason they were doing this was so that they lose every game and they try to get their, their best pick possible for a quarterback. Um, but, yeah, if you're an Eagles fan, you're feeling pretty good about your next two games. And yeah, well, they should. But let me let me double back on the Colts because I took a stance on this as of Sunday and I'm not moving off until I'm proven wrong. I say starting for the Indianapolis Colts next week, a quarterback will be Nick Foles, the man who delivered the <laughs> Super Bowl here to Philadelphia, that they're going to get another look at Mike Ellinger throwing for 98 yards this week. And Jeff Saturday is going to walk in Ursay's office and go, hey, do you want me to try and win? Get you're you're asking me to embarrass myself. I'm taking crap from all over the entire country that I'm overmatched. I'm unqualified. I can't be the coach of this team. And then we go out, we get beat because my quarterback can't throw the ball down the field. I got this Foles guy sitting on the bench. How do I not start him in a game? I'm sticking to it. I stay Foles starts next week. Am I nuts? No, you're not nuts. I think it could be him or even Matt Ryan. They just put Matt Ryan back in there. I know Matt Ryan was terrible this year, but I I mean, listen, it's a combination of two things. Matt Ryan was not good. Also, they cannot block anybody. So um, I don't know that it matters who plays quarterback. Whoever it is is going to get pounded behind that offensive line. I, what I don't understand with the Colts – well, I should rephrase it. There's a lot of things I don't understand with the Colts. One of the things I do not understand with the Colts, why does Chris Ballard still have a job? Like, everybody talks about Chris Ballard like he's a really good general manager. And I do not understand why. I know that they got thrust into a bad situation with Andrew Luck retiring, and everybody was shocked at that. That was four years ago. Yeah. Like, at, at what point th does that stop becoming an excuse? Like, Fair. they have cap space, a ton of it, every year because they don't have to pay a quarterback. And yet, they never have weapons other than Shaq Leonard and Quentin Nelson. Who are the star players on that team? It's been Jonathan Taylor for a year or two now. That's been it. If your star players are a running back, a guard, and a linebacker, you're screwed. You're not going <laughs> to win. Get, I mean, that, that's it. Like, th that's great. There are three really good players. Yeah. But you're not, you're not winning a Super Bowl based on that. So, I, maybe Ballard will just be there at the end of the year. I know he's close with Ursay. Maybe that's part of it. Ursay just he's his guy and he doesn't <laughs> want to fire him. But – now, you look at that team, I'll tell you what, if Saturday doesn't work out and they go looking for another head coach at the end of the year, 
that is not going to be an attractive job. Who wants that job? No. Go work with Jim Irsay and no. have no quarterback. Yeah, you get your picks, but that's not a job I think many people are lining up for. Well, you mentioned uh, talking to some people around the league. The one person, that's how I t- uh, uh, looked at it. Irsay's done it before, you know, suck for luck. It's pretty <laughs> clear to me he he's tanking. I mean, that's what he's doing. Um I, I I I don't see any any other avenue. I know the talk about Jeff Saturday, and you know maybe Jeff Saturday is doing him a, a favor because if you're if you I'll, I'll phrase it to you this way, Matt. If you're Gus Bradley, or you're uh, John Fox, or even Bubba Batrone, mm-hmm. why do you want all these losses on your red? That sticks with you, even with that interim tag. To have loss after loss after loss. They're a bad football team. Sure. Um, you know, the owner's telling them, you have to start Sam Ellinger. I mean, it, who's going to win? Why Why does Gus Bradley want that on his resume? That's kind of where I'm, I'm with the the strange coaching hire. Yeah. I mean, look, that's it's fair. Like, I mean, now if you're Gus Bradley, unfortunately for Gus Bradley, you have enough losses on your head coach. Yeah, exactly. Head. But that's, right. you know, you um, don't want to make it worse. I, you know, so that's fair. I will say this, though. I do think – I wrote this on Monday when all this happened. Um, mm. I do think, though, if you're a coach on that staff, you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, what the hell's happening? Like we yeah. – you know, none of us are qualified to do this job, but you brought in some guy who's never coached in college or pro, I, and I, I get it. I understand that he was a great player. Reggie Wayne is on the staff. Like, Reggie Wayne was a better player than Jeff Saturday, and he's already in your building. Cato June is on staff and has been. Like, so to me, now, if those guys just turned the, the, the offer down, that'd be one thing, but there's no indication that that happened. I, I just know if, I, if it was me and I was on that staff, I'd be thinking to myself, like, now my boss is somebody who's never coached a game at a meaningful level, and I'm supposed to be okay with that? If I was a player, I'd feel the same way. If I'm a player, maybe I'd feel a little differently in the sense that Jeff Saturday was a really good player for a long time. So maybe there's a little part of me as a player that's like, okay, let's see how this shakes out. If I'm on that coaching staff, I'm pissed. I am I am not in a good mood about that. So right. um, that all being said, listen, none of this is going to matter long term because that team is circling the drain. Unless he, unless he comes in and, and he's Vince Lombardi, Jeff Saturday is about to have a really rough couple of months. Right. I mean, that, that's what's going to happen. That, but your let schedule let me play easy. devil's ad- advocate for a second here. Go ahead. <clears throat> One o'clock game, Titans-Broncos in yep. Tennessee. Titans supposed to win. They probably will win. Yes. But if they don't, if Russell Wilson somehow pulls out a cape and goes back to being Russell Wilson and the Titans lose in the early window, here come the Colts in the late window playing – the god awful Raiders with Josh McDaniel, who now that Frank Reich is fired, should, in my opinion, have the hottest seat under him of any coach in the National Football League. And you're in the game and you got a chance to get to four, five, and one. And Tennessee with the loss is coming back to five and four. If you're Jeff Saturday on the sidelines, you're going, Yeah, the coach, the owner kind of told me we're not supposed to win this game. I got to coach the way to. Come on, not Jeff Saturday. He's a winner. They will play hard in the sense that every player knows you have to put on good tape, whether it's for your team or the next team. You know, whenever people talk about tanking, it's never because the players are out there yeah. tanking, yeah. right? It's, I mean, that yeah. doesn't happen. That doesn't exist. It's because the team puts the players in such a position that it's almost impossible to win. I would even go one farther, Matt, and say it's never the coaches either. It's no, always it's executives. We're, yes. we, nobody knows more about tanking than us in Philadelphia because we went through Sam Hinkie and the NBA. The Sixers were trying to win all those games. The coaches, Brett Brown, the players, he just stripped them of every available right. option that they could not win games. That That's Jim Irsay. When I say tanking, it's not even Jeff. It's not Jeff Saturday. It's not the players. No, it's, not. it's not the coaches. They have too much pride. These these are the most competitive people in the world. 
if they're not going to go out there and thing. But the, the problem for the players and the coaches, as you mentioned, John, is the, the executives will tank because they don't have to worry about their jobs yeah. in a lot of these cases, right? So um, I will say, though, I, I have to I, – I wrote this. I, can't, I could not be more excited for the Colts Raiders game. I am so fascinated by that. It's a, it's like a, it's like a car accident where nobody gets hurt, but it's just it's like one of those like those NASCAR things where you know like maybe it's like a highlight from twenty years ago. Where you know everybody was fine. But it's one of those things like the car just flips like seventy times down the track and you can't stop watching it. That's how I feel about this. If this is going to be, you've got first of all, think about this too. Josh McDaniels, Josh, set this, yeah, he set yeah. this whole thing in motion. Yeah, he left them at the altar years ago. Yep. Yeah. And Chris Ballard ripped them in a press conference right after it. Then they went out and hired Reich, and it appeared to be fair for a while. Like that was a good hire, and it was for a while. Now it is not. Um, McDaniel's then gets treated like some kind of a coaching god for years because he sat there and put his arms up and watched Brady throw a bunch of passes. Okay, <laughs> and then he then goes to the Raiders. It is a disaster. Hey, it hey, is. Hey. He, he didn't, didn't learn anything from Denver. Didn't he learn learned anything. Blow, he, born, he learned how to blow a 17 point lead because he's done, he's won a 17 point lead or more three times now in eight games, which has got to be some kind of a record. So they are now two and six. The best part about all of this is this game's in Vegas. So if they lose to Jeff Saturday and the Colts, and it, <laughs> the, the fervor from Davis, from Mark Davis's owner's box, you're actually going to be able to see it during the game. The thing that really cracks me up is if you look at the sports books this week, well, all this has been going on at the Colts. That line hasn't moved an inch all week long. Really? Not, not one inch. The sports books have not moved that game at all. They're like, yeah, it's fine. They're playing the Raiders. It's still the same line. So I'm fascinated by this. Like, if Josh McDaniels loses this game, it's got to be one of the most embarrassing losses in recent NFL history. You're playing a team that's not even trying to win games with a coach who legitimately showed up out of nowhere six days ago and you lose at home. So I, I'm fascinated to see how this shakes out. Yeah. All right, Maddie. before we get to your opinion on Eagles, because that's one of the reasons we like getting guys like you on because we're so inundated, inundated by the Eagles is sometimes we need to take a step back at a uh, view from someone from the outside looking in. But I want to ask you about one other team in the league. And that would be the Miami Dolphins and their quarterback, Tua Tungabaloa, who is right now the number one passer raider, passer raider in the uh, National Football League. Uh, the Dolphins are a legit contender in the AFC, and their offense is one of the best in the entire league. Tua and the Dolphin passing game are much improved from where they were last year. Several reasons for it. I need you to put these three in order for me as to why they're as improved as they are. Number one, they added Tyree Kill. You add a weapon like that. We're seeing it here in Philadelphia. A.J. Brown, domino effect. Everything gets better. Number two, they've got one of the younger, brighter, innovative offensive guys in the National Football League as their head coach rather than a defensive head coach like they had last year. Or number three, two, it just got better. And I think most people dismiss that third one. I don't because I always thought it was going to be a franchise quarterback in this league. Those are the three main reasons. If you want to add a fourth, please do. But at least put those three in order for me. I'd put them in the order you put them in. I, I would. I Look, Tyree Hill's on pace to shatter the single season yardage mark for a receiver. Which I'll, I'll be the first one to say. I thought he'd have a good year. I did not think he would have the year he's having. It was actually, you know, it's funny, like all off season, there was all this talk about, okay, well, is he going to fall off without Mahomes? What is Mahomes going to look like without Tyreek Hill? Well, Hill might shatter the single season yardage record and Mahomes is the favorite to be the MVP. So <laughs> as it turns out, both of them are just fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Hill, Hill's been a, a, an absolute game changer for Miami. Nobody gets more free yardage than Tyreek Hill because teams are just terrified of him. Yeah. They back up, and so plus he got yeah he got one eighty with Skylar Thompson, Teddy Bridgewater. I would it's have wanted that. Yeah, but I yeah. watched him for years in Kansas City, where you know it'd be third and five, and they would the teams would just pick here, take five. That's fine. Take first, <laughs> they back up, 
I mean, you, you, I can't hear how many times he'd run a little comeback route and the corner would be 10 yards off of him because he's terrified of getting beat. But no, that I think is number one. McDaniel's come in and done a really nice job. Uh, I do think that matters. But coaching matters in every sport. It matters more in football than any other sport. Yeah. Right. No I mean, co- coaching yeah. in football, I would argue that the head coach is the second most important person on the field on Sunday behind the quarterback. I, it, you, if you don't have a good head coach, you have no shot in the NFL. But I, I also am with you, Jody Mack. Like, you can't dismiss Tua. Tua has been excellent. You, you get these people who point out the deep ball stuff. Yes, he does not have a big arm. Nobody would argue that. He, he underthrows guys sometimes. He's having a really good year. Like, at some point, I think it's just people don't want to admit they were wrong about him. Yeah. And you know what? I've thought for a couple of years, I don't know what he's going to be, but I'd like to see him with an offensive line. I'd like to see him with some weapons. Now you're seeing that. Look, do I think he's a top three quarterback in the league? No, I don't think he's a top three quarterback in the league. Do I think you can win with him? (laughs) Yeah. They haven't lost a game with him this year. So I will say this. If you're Buffalo, if you're Kansas City, are they probably the scariest team to see in a playoff game? In the sense they can score with you, yeah. Now, defensively, they might give up 55 points to either one of those two teams. But offensively, they can put it on you. And I think you got to give Tua a lot of credit for that. He's played really well. He, he, he truly has. And they've got two games coming up that you ought to win. they got Cleveland and Houston the next two weeks. Um, and then an interesting trip. The Niners, the Chargers, the Bills. Three games on the road in a row. That will challenge them. Yeah, and he's tremendously accurate in, in the intermediate. Uh, and, and how many times did he throw the ball 40, 50 yards down the field? I think that's one of the most overrated things in the NFL. So Tua's doing a, a great job, you know, getting the football where it needs to be so guys like Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle can also get the yards after catch. That's that's very important ball placement. Uh, he, he deserves credit. He's playing very, very well. Um I, I you you mentioned Kansas City and Buffalo, and yep. I know you're you're really plugged in with Kansas City. Now, watching this Eagles team, and I didn't think we'd be here, but everybody kind of still defaults to Kansas City and Buffalo first. I want to throw this out at you, Matt. From two through fifty-two, you just mentioned the defensive issues with Buffalo yep. and Kansas City. From two through fifty-two, the Eagles are better than Kansas City and Buffalo. Everybody's still worried about the quarterback. Do you think that's fair? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Philadelphia is definitely a deeper team than Kansas City is. And I I, I think they're de- deeper than Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo right now, too, has got a lot of injuries going on. The one thing that would scare me with Buffalo, more than even with Philly or Kansas City in, in the playoffs, Buffalo is completely dependent on one guy. I mean, everything everything goes through Allen. Like, there have been some games this year where the Chiefs have rushed for a couple hundred yards, and Mahomes hasn't been a big part of it. Tampa Bay, they had a huge game running against San Francisco. Like, they can they can do that when they want to. When they Now, last week against Tennessee, they couldn't run for a yard. But most, most weeks, the Chiefs are actually like a pretty decent rushing team when they commit to it. Buffalo cannot. They can't, the ball. Yeah, they can't. They can't run they can't the ball on foot. They don't and even they, try for the no. most part. Yeah. And, it's a weird thing because Diggs is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Gabriel Davis is averaging 25 yards of reception, but he only has 18 catches. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a team that is very reliant on, on a very strict formula on how to win games. Now, it's worked to a degree, but you wonder in the playoffs, like if there's a game where Allen, and he has these sometimes, doesn't play particularly well, they, like, they're screwed. There is no left hand, right, in that in that team's uh, bag, if you will. I think the Eagles are the most talented team in football. I is also that, is uh, sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Is that shame on the Buffalo general manager that he didn't go up and uh, out and upgrade the running back position at the trade mm-hmm. deadline? I, I, a little, but you know what? I think it's more shame on the coaching staff. Honestly. Well, he did. They got Naheem Hines, but I mean, yeah. you know I, that. I mean, He's to me, he's more of a pass catching back. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, he is. I, but they don't run team, it. They don't want to run it. That's just it. To me, it's a coaching problem. Yeah, Devin okay. Singletary is you know, Singletary's a decent back. He's not Walter Payton, but he's a decent back. But my my problem with them is you know this is going to be a problem come January. Like you know, at some point, especially if they're at home in that weather, 
you know at some point you're going to have to run the ball. And to just say, well, it's Josh Allen. That's all it's going to be. It's going to be him every play. We're gonna... To me, is short-sighted. Now, I do think the Eagles are the more complete team than both of them. And I, by the way, I think Hurts, look, is he Allen or Mahomes? No. Hurts has been really, really good. Really good. Really like good. Eight and a half yards an attempt. He's not turning the ball over. Obviously, he can run for a lot of yardage when he wants to. Uh, Hurts has been excellent. I mean, Hurts, for me, this this year is absolutely a top five quarterback in the NFL. So I, I, I do not understand the argument that some people have with Philadelphia where it's, well, they haven't played a tough schedule. Look, the Eagles have beaten every team they've played, and they've pounded a lot of them. So – is that not what you're supposed to do when you play these teams that are so so? Yeah. You know, I I mean, Buffalo lost to the Jets last week. The Chiefs lost to the Colts. Like the Eagles haven't lost any of these types of teams. Yeah. So, you know, like I, I think that the, the the Eagles get the unfair rap because this current group is unproven. But to me, I, I don't know. I, I I believe that the Eagles are the most well rounded team in the NFL, and I think they could win 15 games. You're looking at their schedule. I don't think they'll go 17 and 0 because it's just so hard. Yeah. Like it's just nobody, nobody goes undefeated, right? But I I think they're gonna I think they're gonna be a one seed. I think they're gonna have home field, and I think they're gonna be a favorite any game they play in the NFC. Who's gonna be the second best team in the NFC? If we all acknowledge that the Eagles are the best team yep. in the NFC, Johnny and I think they're the best team overall. Um, who's the second best team in the NFC when all said and done? I, for me, it's between two teams, and it kind of just depends on the health of one of them. I think it's Dallas or San Francisco. I know San Francisco's four and four, so it's kind of an odd thing to say in terms of their record. If I was Philly and you ranked like who I wouldn't want to see in a playoff game, they're probably number one because they are really talented. I mean, one thing about the 49ers is that team, they are a great defensive team when they're healthy. And offensively, you've got McCaffrey and Kittle and Samuel and Ayuk. They, they've they got a lot of guys, and they're good up front. Now, the, of course, the flying the ointment is Garoppolo, right? Garoppolo is the guy you look yeah. at, okay, well, how's that going to – how's it going to shake? I find it incredible. I was looking at the NFC playoff picture. So, there are – for all the quarterbacks who are currently in the playoffs right now in the NFC, there have been seven quarterbacks wins if you will for those for those teams four of them are from garoppolo so he's got more wins than the entire rest of the field in the playoffs right now now of, of course some of that's a function of gino's never started a playoff game daniel jones yeah. has never started a play, you know so on and so forth dak has one win cousins has one win garoppolo has four wins right i mean hurts obviously was in the playoffs last year didn't get didn't get the victory but um this and, and Mariota had a win. Now that's changed. I should say that's changed because Brady now technically with the tiebreakers in there. But this was before before Brady moved into the tiebreaker and the Falcons were winning the division. Man. That was it. Now, of course, Brady blows everybody out of the water. Um, but I think it's the Niners or the Cowboys. The Cowboys defensively are gonna keep themselves in games. I I, I don't see I know the Vikings are seven and one. I don't see the Vikings going in there and beating the Eagles. I just don't. I don't see no. them doing it. I don't see no. the Giants doing it. Seattle, I, I guess I'd give a puncher's chance just because, to be fair to them, they've they've really outperformed every expectation, but I really couldn't see it. I'd be shocked if Seattle went in and beat the Eagles. I'd give Dallas a shot. I'd give San Francisco a shot. I don't think anybody else is doing it. Yeah, and Joe, I'm with you with San Francisco. Jody knows that. I picked them to go to the Super Bowl to begin with. I think it's a tremendously talented team. Really good team. I, I thought – you know, I love Kyle Shanahan as a coach, uh, especially from a scheme standpoint, mm -hmm. offensively, uh, not necessarily from a game management standpoint. But um, it, I it, I thought Trey Lance would be a little bit better than Jimmy Garoppolo. A little bit, Tad, a little bit more explosion. And we all know Kyle didn't want to play Jimmy Garoppolo. He basically right. took the air out of the football on the way to the Super Bowl when they lost it to Kansas city, because he didn't want Jimmy Garoppolo screwing it up. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want that particular quarterback, but Jimmy has proven he can game manage his way to victories. And I start looking at Christian McCaffrey, as you mentioned, added to Debo Samuel, like, you know, and he's one of the few coaches right. that can take advantage of that. 
Uh, that is the one team I'd look at and say, boy, if they get going, they're going to be a real difficult out in the playoffs besides the Eagles. But I think the Eagles are the better team overall. I, I think right now the Eagles are – like to me, when when you look at Philly, the, the one thing I would say about it, and I don't think you can say about anything in football other than the Eagles, what is their glaring weakness? Like, yeah, what is the tackling. Thing- they don't tackle well. I mean, you know, maybe the backers, you know, maybe the backers aren't overwhelming, but I don't think it's a glaring weakness. Like, I don't think it's like with Kansas City, their four man pass rush stinks. Now, they're a, they're a great when they blitz. When they blitz, they're really good at that. And that's not surprising. Spagnolo is a disciple of Jimmy John, uh, Jim Johnson. Yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah. He's probably the most creative blitzer in the NFL along with Wing Martindale. Like, they get home relentlessly when they blitz, but they have to blitz. Buffalo, no run game to speak of. You know, that that is their kryptonite, I, I think, in a lot of ways. There's nothing about the Eagles. Like, they have great corners. They can get a pass rush. The, I think the most underrated thing about the Eagles nationally is how good their offensive line is. Their offensive line is great. It's been great for years. Hurts has taken the next step. He's a really good quarterback. You've got three weapons that you really believe in. I mean, maybe, maybe that's the concern if there's one, like, be, like the, the depth of, of, of weaponry on the outside. Like maybe like somebody got hurt or something, unfortunately. Like maybe that, but you could say it about any team, right? Yeah. I mean, you injuries can, you know, are always the great. Right. I mean, you could say it about any team. You know, yeah. if, if the Chiefs lose Kelsey or, or Smith Schuster, they're in yeah. trouble. If the Bills yeah. lose Davis or Dick, yeah. So I I think probably the biggest thing, and this is just something they're going to get, but I, I don't worry about this for them, is just the experience in the playoffs of just going through and winning. But in the NFC, who the hell is going to beat you with experience? I mean, maybe the Niners, right? Like, they would be the team. You go, okay, they have a lot of experience. Everybody else, the Eagles have more experience than half these teams just because they were in one playoff game. That's true. (laughs) I mean, I I buy the Eagles. I think the Eagles are going to be the team that ends up coming out of the NFC. And And by the way, for the record, I don't know that I think they're better than Buffalo or Kansas City, but I don't think they're worse either. Like, I just think if they play each other, it would be a really, really good game. I don't – I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, it would be a touchdown underdog. I don't think that at all. I think the Eagles would be, I don't know, a pick em against one of those two teams. Right. Could be a toss-up on a yeah. neutral Super and I, Bowl. I think if you feel it, you take that, right? All right. Uh, I got to get you on the record for this because I threw this out here earlier on the show. Nine games at either 1 or 4 o'clock this, after, uh, this weekend on okay. Sunday. One game. With both teams having winning records, one out of nine games, there's only one game okay. where you got two winning teams playing each other. That's the Vikings and the Bills. Right. But you're going to be drawn off that game by the car wreck that is yeah. the Colts and the Raiders. Come on, Verderam, you got the remote control in your hand. Are you watching more Bills, Vikings, or Colts, Raiders on Sunday? So I think, I think that the, the Colts Raiders game is just. Yeah, it's, it's just fun. You know what, Matt? It might be Case Keenum for Buffalo. So I know. I, I think exciting. it probably will be. Yeah. It probably will be Case Keenum. And and yeah. also, if I'm now, so it it is amazing. Like you bring up the point, and it is true. You look at the games this week, and I feel like we say this every week right now. I feel like every week we say this because of how bad a lot of these teams in the NFL are. And by the way, Jody, to your point. We are blessed with the fact that one of those games is a one o'clock kick and the other one's a four o'clock kick. Oh, that, uh, that culture at four. That's right. You said the yeah. Raiders. All right. So that, you watch both. Every snap that, of both right. games just we're, have it ready to go when we're, the, we're, the early game ends. We're saved. But I you know, I wrote about this a couple weeks ago, and it is true. I cannot remember mm-hmm. a year where there is there is a dearth of good teams in the NFL like there are this year. I mean, we I feel like we've been talking about it, but there are three teams in my mind that are really good teams. Philly, Buffalo, Kansas City. You get past that. Like, look, I like Dallas and San Francisco. I like Cincinnati and Baltimore, but they're not those three teams. They're not. Well, they're not as good as those. Doing teams. again. Another another guy disrespecting my Dolphins. Beware, beware the fish, brother. Yeah. I, beware them. I like, him. I That's like all the I'm saying. I like him and I love him offensively, but like, can they stop anybody? Like, what they gave up 32 to Justin Fields and the Bears. Like, what is that adjusted against Buffalo or Kansas City? 55? Uh, they already, they already <laughs> stopped they already Buffalo. The field. Yeah. They already got the Bills once. Also, yeah. I have to, I'll ask you a question. Are you at all concerned about them in a cold weather game? Like, if they got to go to Buffalo or Kansas City in January. Oh, that, 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 yeah, that, they're done. They're like, done. His, they history says with a team like yeah. that, 
you're going to be seeing the pregame yeah. when everybody's got their hands in the warmer and they're all, you know, they're all huddled around that, that yeah. the heater on the sideline. No, like, yeah, it's game. It's not going to end well. There's there's, there's a possibility that much like the road to the Super Bowl is going to run through Philadelphia in the NFC, the road to the Super Bowl might run through uh, South Beach in the AFC. I'm just meant we've already chalked up two wins the next couple weeks, right? Yeah. I I think they they might need it to because I I do not see them going to Buffalo in the third week of January. Now, I I think Buffalo might have an issue because – I don't know how you handle Josh Allen. Like everybody says, that's a big game. I I was telling you this week. I don't think it's a big game. It's an NFC foe. Um, if you're going to lose a game, it might as well be to an NFC team. Um, sure. It doesn't have that much of an impact. He's not. He's not healthy, and he's not going. I saw Doc Flynn, Jessica Flynn. We've had on this show, Jody. What well, uh, you know? She said rest that's how you you solve that injury if they're going to force him to play through that to win a game at week 10 i think that's a big big mistake for buffalo i don't know how you handle it because as you said matt they are so josh allen specific they need him every play of every game to win he's so important to their particular team now every quarterback is but it's amped up as you explained. Yeah. I don't know how they handle this injury. I think I, it's a big concern. I think it was ESPN to give them credit. They, there's a stat. The Bills have scored 25 touchdowns this year on offense. 23 of them have been by Josh Allen. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just now I agree with you, in, 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 but I, I also have a caveat in this sense. So, first of all, I agree with you on your overall point, John, that they cannot play him if he's hurt. They cannot play him. I, he is your franchise. You cannot risk that he gets hurt worse and now he's out for the year or something like that. You need to do right by Josh Allen. Even if Josh Allen is trying to play and that doesn't yeah, matter. He's gonna want to play. Right. No, it doesn't right. matter. Yeah. You need you need to take yeah. that decision out of his hand. Protect him from himself. Yes. Uh, hey. Yes. Half an hour flew right by. That's how good Matt Verderam is. We look up. Oh, shoot. He's been on for a half an hour. Yeah. We, right. appreciate, too long. Yeah. we appreciate the half an hour you gave us today, Matt. We appreciate it. Whenever you come on, make sure you check out his podcast, Stacking the Box, and read him on fansided.com. MV, a pleasure, brother. Appreciate it. Hey, Thanks, thank you. Matt. Take care, guys. Matt.